Hi guys, so today I took the opportunity to say hello on camera. It's a very cold morning, I just dropped off the kids, so it's a great time to try out my coffee maker, which is in this box. I was like, what the heck, I got it from Williams Sonoma. It's the DeLonghi um, espresso maker and coffee maker. Um, it has a frother and all that. And I'll tell you the exact model when I open it because I already forgot the model name. But uh, the reason I even have this, and I've done a review on my old channel and it had um, basically half a million views, was for the Mr. Coffee espresso maker, the cheap one you can get at Walmart for like 30 bucks. I think it's $29. Great little machine. And actually I went to open mine the other day and I could not get the lid off to pour the liquid in. My son had threaded it and it was like impossible. My husband works out, you know, loves all that. Uh, he's a Marine, couldn't get it open. Son couldn't get it open. I could, it was just threaded completely wrong. So it was just impossible. And it was one of the older models where the little screw top lid was very hard to hold. It wasn't, uh, very ergonomic it was horrible i don't know why they did that when they switched out but they're always changing out that model making it look different so this is very similar if you have a mr coffee or any other espresso maker that you're not real sure how to use it i will show you how to use it i'm very familiar with these kind of machines when i was in high or college i used to work at a coffee shop gloria jeans if you guys remember that I used to be like in malls all over the place um and so I'll show you that. I won't show how to brew the coffee itself because that's pretty basic, but we'll talk about the steps for that. And then my Hamilton Beach coffee maker recently, well, the last few months, takes like 20 minutes to brew six to 12 cups of coffee, however long. It's just taking very long. So I don't know if that happens with coffee makers after a while, they just take forever or whatever. But um, so I just want to say hi on camera and we're going to open this guy up and then we will see what all it has. What it looks like. I know they were on back order, so it must be a very popular item. So hopefully, uh, I can help you guys out in learning how to make your cappuccinos, lattes, um, americanos, whatever it is that you want to make that involves espresso. We're gonna check it out, and um, I'll probably make one or two of those drinks because I don't need to make so many drinks. But I'll discuss the other ones, okay? So uh, I'll open it up, and I'll see you in my kitchen. Okay, so I'm gonna just top part here. Obviously, there's an invoice there. I'll put that away because where's my address? And I always end up showing that off. Oh, the other thing is. It says this is normally $4.50, which is not true on Williams Sonoma website. It's $2.99.95. It even says it right on here. But since I hadn't ordered from them online before, I think I got 20% off or something. I don't know. But I got it for like $2.50, basically. Um, was it $15 or 20%? I don't remember. But let's see what this looks like. Oh, here we go. Okay. At the top, it has all kinds of information. 115 volts, 60 hertz, 1500 watts. Um, doesn't mean too much to me. I mean, that's whatever. Uh, so it's the DeLonghi. Uh, let's see. Does it have a name? It's just their basic one. You see this thing on Amazon, it's all over the place. But yeah, it doesn't really have all in one combination coffee, espresso, and cappuccino machine. It says it's a 15 bar. Now, this kind of thing, unless you're really, you know, particular with your espresso, doesn't mean anything. Um, other than the pressure it puts in to make the espresso. So um, more bars is better. <laughs> um, and I think the the coffee maker, the Mr. Coffee one does like two bars or something. <laughs> but either way, it pushes out the espresso. Um, espresso cappuccino latte and it says you have, I don't know, I guess it's just showing different ones. And it has a 24 hour timer, which I never get into that kind of stuff. I just basically wake up in the morning, make my coffee. If I feel like making espresso, I'll make an espresso. So that doesn't matter to me so much. Um, it says type BCO432, so I don't know. I guess that's the uh, model number. And then it has all kinds of information about registering the machine and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's see what's in here. There's some fun things sitting on top here. Like I'm gonna take this out. Oh, it has a little measuring spoon and a temp. So you tamp down your espresso. We'll talk all about that when we actually use the machine. Um, I'm gonna try to pull this thing out. <laughs> it's not super heavy or anything like that. Oh, come on, I'm gonna hold it with my legs again. <laughs> all right, nothing else in there. Just the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all this apart, take all the little accessories out. I'm gonna put it up on my counter and we will start taking a look. Okay, so I was starting to undo this, but I just wanna show you. So this guy is just kinda of tucked in here. Be careful when you're taking it out of the box that you don't just drop it, because obviously it's your glass carafe. I'm gonna put that to the side. And one other thing that's tucked in there is this. 
So obviously you're not gonna throw away because you can see. I know sometimes people package things in a way that you might not have noticed something that was stuck in the styrofoam and it's gone. So let's go ahead and go through everything and just make sure we're not misplacing anything. The very bottom here it comes with some little tape um, on there. Obviously you're gonna remove that. I'm gonna leave it for now because I always leave things like that. We are gonna remove this side one though because that's the opening that we need to put in um, our liquid. I'm not sure exactly, it just pops open. This is kind of interesting because it did say that to do your coffee, you don't have to pull the machine out because you know how that happens sometimes with coffee makers. So we'll see about that. But at the same time, the this is up on top. So kind of weird because to me that requires being pulled out. But okay, so there's one thing already that's kind of, hmm, I don't know. Um, but most coffee makers are like that. This is your frother. It tells you here, hot milk, cappuccino. I'm not sure why it says those words, but that's what it says. This is an interesting little shape. I've never seen one. It's very, very large, so maybe that helps you froth easier. I'm pretty good at frothing, so that's not a big deal for me. Again, I'm gonna rinse out the carafe. I'll open that up. I'm not gonna be showing how to use make the coffee, but I do wanna stick to the cappuccino fun part espresso. So we have this thing. This is our basket, your brewing basket for the espresso side. And tucked in here is this little guy that is a filter, which is kind of a bummer. I didn't really feel like, well, for some people they like that, I don't. I don't like having to pick up extra things. So that's already one thing that I'm like, eh. And then we have two um, baskets here, which is interesting. And I don't know if they're different or if these give you an extra one. Let's see what this is about. I'll have to take a pause and read through because if this is an extra one, that's cool. But at the same time, I've never ruined a basket, so I don't see. They look identical. <laughs> That's very interesting. Hopefully, it's not something that easily breaks. It's, it's weird to me that they are included too. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this guy out. I'm gonna rinse this out because this is where you put this little filter basket. It holds your, um, your espresso, your grounds, right? Maybe one's deeper. Yep, that's what it is. Because this is very small. So this is probably just for one uh, shot of espresso. And if you want to do two, you put it in this guy. Okay, perfect, so that's good. That's kind of scary. I'm like, if they think that it breaks so easily, you need another basket, which is crazy because they're metal, they shouldn't break. So what I'm gonna do is take a quick pause, read a little bit about what they think you should do or how to run it through the system the first time, and then um, we'll try on making some uh, some drinks. Okay, so their Easy Start um, booklet is very well written. It's easy to read, easy to look at. It's kind of interesting, so this is what, um, I guess I was uh, talking about the water tank, so supposedly you don't have to bring it out. So basically you're gonna put a whole tank of water and then um, that's what's gonna go into the machine on either side. So that's that's interesting. So like I said, I'm not gonna brew coffee because that's the most basic thing in the world, but all you would do is you'd have your carafe. Um, it says remove the coffee pot, fill with desired amount of water, open the water fill compartment. So let's say you're making 10 cups because I think that's the most this will do. You fill up your carafe with 10 cups you're going to open this up um, and you're going to pour the water into this area right here. There's like a an open space there. So that's where the water goes so that way you don't have to move your machine every time. Put the water in there and then go ahead and put your coffee grinds in uh, the filter basket that already comes with which is nice. So this is a reusable filter basket. I guess if you really wanted to put paper one in there just because you can but if you don't want any waste you just use this guy, right? So um, you have that. Put in your grounds, close it up, put your craft back, and then you would start whatever it is you want to do here. Um, one to four cups has its own option here that you would press. Um, and then other than that, you would just run it, right? So I always wonder what the one to four cups thing is. I think it holds the water back a little bit so the water just doesn't run through and then your coffee is very weak. I think that's normally what that one to four cup option is about. Uh, I'm gonna place this in here. Like I said, I haven't rinsed it out yet. Obviously I'm not gonna use it. Just so it looks nice and you guys can see what this <laughs> looks like all together. This is very well wrapped in whatever this little stuff is here. Hold on. Super basic machine. It does have a cappuccino or a froth uh, or a hot milk option with the frother, which is odd. Okay. I don't know what that's about, but that's what it is. So on this side, it says you're going to open this up. So you will have to move the machine for this part. Um, for me, it's going to be closer to under my cabinet. So like, it's not the biggest deal. But you do open it up and you're gonna remove this and you're just gonna fill this up with water. So you're gonna have water in here and it's gonna be a while before you pretty much used up this water. If you are not an espresso drinker like every day, I would probably empty this every time I would use it because 
you just want stagnant water sitting in there? I don't. So if you're an avid coffee drinker and you're going to use this a lot, obviously, great. Um, and especially if you're first starting out using it. It's only a shot of espresso is about two ounces, right? So it's really going to use four ounces, but then you need liquid. You need the water in here to froth your milk, to froth your, uh, to make your cappuccinos or lattes or whatever. So it does need a little extra, but not that much. So I'm going to quickly kind of give this a rinse and put in some filtered water that comes from my fridge. And, um, and then I'll come back and put it in here. And I want to see about this filter. It didn't say anything about this in the instructions. So I'm assuming, let me put this down. I'm going to turn this, there's one little filter that it came with, right? And there's a spot here that says filter, and there's odd. I'm going to have to read about this, but it's not in the ready-to-go guide. But I'm assuming it goes in here somewhere, because otherwise, how would it do its job? So let me find that out, but I will bring back the filtered water that I already have going, um, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so to read about the filter, you really have to find the information here, and I'm going to point it out because I don't want you to miss that so there's pictures here that show you what you should do the first time you use it it does say to run the cappuccino four times to run before using it without coffee grounds and to froth milk four times without uh milk just use water and i'll show you that so i'll show you how to do it one time because that's kind of uh redundant I'll, and then i'll keep doing it before i use it and then um as far as the filter the information is kind of like on this page eight and it's right up here okay in this top corner and so basically they're saying that i need to take this little filter out of its plastic sachet which is a plastic bag <laughs> and rinse it under um cold water or you know the faucet it doesn't say for how long or like you know sometimes with Brita filters you have to let it, let it let it run so i'm just going to go rinse it really quickly and it's probably going to be super sloppy I'll... basically you're just wetting it and it's going to probably turn like that black color i don't know okay so i ran it through there and then you're going to open this little thing up. There's like a little cage in here. So, and you can kind of tell which side needs to open. You just pop it open. And then you're just going to put this guy in here with that flat side up, you know, just like the way it looks like a little pouch. And then slap that shut. And now I'm going to put it back in the top of the machine where it came out of where it says filter, right? And there's like a little notch in it. Hopefully you can see my fingers are going into that little notch. So make sure that notch is facing out when you put it back. And you'll see the word filter. And it has like some little hole here for some reason, but okay. So now that I know that I need to do this at least four times, I think this is enough water. I only did it like halfway because I was going to start making cappuccinos, but apparently I have to do some prep work for the first time. So let's put this back down in here. There is a max fill line that's about an inch and a half from the top, just so you know. And I'm going to pop that down. And now I'm going to plug it in. It says that you can make the cord short if you want. It's a really nice long cord, which is great. I'll, I always like a long cord better than short, even though short's supposed to be a little safer. But it says that you can do what you need for it to be a short cord. I guess you shove it back inside here because there's plenty of room inside the machine for that cord to tuck in if you need that. Which will make it nice. It'll look nicer, right? Okay, so now it's already on. I'm not going to run through and set the time and all this other stuff because... I'm not really caring about that. What is interesting about this thing is that, um, like I said, we have to run through it. So I'll, so let's do a quick run through. I'm just going to put in the two cup basket. doesn't really matter because we're not using any grinds right now or grounds. And I'm just trying to see if there's a certain way. Okay, so there's little notches in the front and the back of this. And there's little notches on this guy. So I'm assuming you pop that in there. I don't, I guess you just put it in there. You don't have to twist it or anything. Okay. So normally you would put your little coffee grounds that we'll talk about in a minute. So I'm not going to talk about it right now. Your espresso grounds, should I say. Um, there is nothing here, so that's good. So normally what happens is as you feel around, you can see these These are going to be your locking, like like a bolt or like a nut. But you kind of feel around for it. And then you turn it front to the front. Ooh, that is really tight. That's kind of scary, even. <laughs> okay, so normally I just go to the front like that. It's kind of a little bit sideways, I wonder. Hmm. Let me make sure it doesn't have to be a certain type because that is super, super tight. Normally it just faces forward. Yeah, it's just facing forward. Okay. The basket has two little holes, right? So basically, espresso is going to come out of the, both of those holes. Now, if you're making one cup of one shot, you just want to put it in your mug or whatever, your nice little cappuccino cup. I don't have one right now. I wanted to be kind of see-through because I want you guys to see um, the way that you do the milk and everything. 
you would just place it under here and this one's kind of big but that's okay i just knocked out whatever that red thing was so it fits um and the espresso will pour out of both holes either way if you're making one shot or if you're making two shots so if you want two shots to go in your mug put your mug let both shots go in there if you want one shot it'll still come out of both holes but it'll only be two ounces of espresso if you want to make two separate shots because you and your friend are gonna have some drinks or whatever or you just want a shot of espresso i have these cute little cups from starbucks basically you're gonna put one on either side so you can just kind of eyeball it that that one will come down this way and one will come down the other way and that's how you do your two shots um, but of course you have to put in enough espresso for the two shots right so for right now we're just going to fake this out i'm going to put this here i'm going to put this here actually you know what let's go ahead and use this only so you can see it better because right now what you're going to do is let water run through and so da, da, da. i'm assuming because of this this thing already knows that you have two now <laughs> this is weird Actually, you know, I'll talk about that later when we actually go to make this espresso. Because you're supposed to, once you put a new water basket in here, you're supposed to press to run and then just let some water come out. And once the water starts coming out, press, turn it off. So, which is kind of interesting. Um, so let's just press. This is the espresso options right here, sorry. So it's always just on. You have to make your, just for water to come through or to make your espresso. And then you have the steaming option. We're not pressing steaming yet, right? So we're just looking at making the espresso. It's already lit, so might as well. And I'm assuming, yeah. So you hear it coming through? I'm gonna try to close up just a little bit. And it's taking a little second to come out. <laughs> I'm gonna get a slightly different angle. Sorry, there you go. So if I was just doing this because, um, I was adding in some new water, which we'll do when we go to actually make our espresso. I'll show you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to turn it on until the water starts coming out and then turn it off, which is kind of some weird, <laughs> to be honest. But I'm curious to see when it stops. Cause like, how does this thing know there's two? I guess that basket being in there does something for it and lets it know like, hey, there's two shots here. We'll see when it stops. It's not as quiet as I, as I like. My other machine didn't make any noise. The Mr. Coffee. So, kind of weird. Am I supposed to turn it off manually? No, okay, it's slowing down. Ooh, Lord. I don't know if you can see, my cups are full already. That's crazy. Oh, I don't like that. Let me read about this, because if I'm supposed to turn it off manually and keep an eye on it, that's really kind of a bummer. Let's see, use the falter, da, da, da. Well, you know what, also, if there was espresso in there, it probably wouldn't, so much wouldn't come out, right? Because the water is just running through the machine instead of staying in the grounds a little bit. Yeah, when the light is on, was green, press button to start coffee delivery. When the desired quantity is reached, press button again to stop. So you literally have to stay here and babysit it. <gasps> okay, I don't know if I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll see if I end up keeping this machine. But, um, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, pour these out, but not quite yet. So I want to show you as far as the um, this milk brewing frothing. So apparently, that's so weird. It has these two little options, right? It says hot milk or uh, cappuccino. And if you want hot milk, you press it up because I guess it's just not going to froth it. But it's but the frothing really has to do with how you handle the thing. So that's kind of odd. But we have it on hot milk. I want it on cappuccino. Pressing down. Now it does not come with one of these, but if you can get yourself a little a little guy like this, that would be best. I think I got this probably at Smart and Final, or maybe um, they sell things like this, you know, all kinds of home goods stores, but it's just a little frothing pitcher, basically. And it looks like nothing, right? You're like, oh, that's not gonna make anything, but this is plenty to make even two drinks out of. But let me put some water in it, because we're gonna froth water, basically, the first few times. I've just never seen an espresso maker where you have to tell it to stop. That is really kind of annoying. Even the like I said, the Mr. Coffee one <laughs> will just do it for you. So anyway, I put some water in here, leaving some space at the top. Same thing I would do with milk. And you're going to turn this off switch all the way. Let me move this a little bit differently so you can see better. I don't know about this machine. Oh, that's such a bummer. And look how much is dripping just from having touched it. Anyway, um, we're going to turn it to froth. And you hear that? Love that noise. So you're supposed to do this just to get some water through it. 
it should start feeling hot. And this is normally how I froth anyway. I'll just hold it here for a little bit, kind of give it some swirls. This thing needs to stay submerged, okay? The frother. And I just keep going like this. And it is already out of steam. Okay. We'll talk about frothing when I actually put milk in here. But that's interesting because if it's out of steam, let me turn off the espresso part. I just turned it off right here. This is the espresso on and off actually. So this doesn't always have to be on. Um, I want to look at this water and see if it's already run out. Where's my... Because it should have had plenty to steam with. <laughs> That's kind of odd. Let me move this over. Ooh, watch out, it's hot. So are those little cups. Oh yeah, no, it still has water. I'll show you if I can. It just, I guess it isn't enough once it gets to this level apparently where it's right near those little gaskets it's not enough to keep it going so odd okay so i'm gonna add some more water run it through a few more times and then when i come back we'll get ready to actually make some some good stuff okay guys so let me get my tamper we are ready to go i already put a lot of water in that little reservoir so that's in there ready to go um all we're gonna use is this and then of course you need coffee grounds and of course i use cafe bustelo because that's awesome but for some people, it's a little a little too hot, a little too real. Okay, you might want to use like Cafe Lavazza or Lavazza brand or um, Illy, whatever you like to use, right? Um, right now I have Cafe Excelsior only because I probably got this for like some kind of good price at like TJ Maxx or something. But I always use Cafe Bustelo, that's my thing. Um, this is a cute jar, a can, that's why I bought that one. Um, usually it looks like this. Yes, I have lots, it usually looks like this guy. But right now, they have this one that reminded me of like, I don't know, that Morty and whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't it, Rick and Morty? I don't know. It's very fun. Cafe La Llave is also good. They're all about the same price, too. I mean, some obviously cost them more than others, but um, these are easily found now. So I'm going to show you how to make two different drinks. So I'm going to do two shots of espresso, even though I would normally let both shots go right into one, one cup. Um... I want to go ahead and let them go into two separate shot glasses. If you had really small cups that you could put in there, like those little glass, like what they show on the cover of the box, that would be great. But right now I'm gonna have to go ahead and just put them in two different shot glasses. When I worked at Glory Jeans or like, um, you know, my son was working at Starbucks, you can get little sh glass shot, like shot glasses that are actual glasses that you can put in there that fit better and then you just throw them into your drink. But for right now I'm gonna use these little guys, that's what I have. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off just because <laughs> I am afraid. So what happens is the machine is usually pressurized, so you shouldn't just like, ah, you know, with some of these other ones. This one seems like it has, even though it has 15 bars, it's an odd machine to work with, but, okay. Um, oh, you know what? This... Yeah, I've run out of that one. So let's open this new one. Oh, actually my son had already opened it. He just left the lid on it. <laughs> he was working at Starbucks, so he started making his own drinks, and that's when... He messed up my other machine. All right, so we are looking for, oh, I just threw water in there. Basically, these should be tablespoon measurements. And so we're gonna put one, two, right? Cause this is the two. This is very full too. This is so weird. <laughs> it's almost like falling out. So no wonder it has to be tamped down really well. Okay, so I'm pushing down really hard. With like the Mr. Coffee one, it says not to really tamp it hard. You just kind of press it a little bit. But this one, it looks like it needs to be tamped down pretty pretty tough there. And clean off the grinds all around because you do not want that getting stuck in your machine or causing any trouble later. So I always clean it up really nicely. Again, we're going to find that little opening. Basically start to the left, you know, with the our handle to the left and then twist it forward. Oh, Lord. This machine is interesting. All right, so I'm gonna put that there. Um, one thing I should have done that I did not do is whenever you put new water in, you're supposed to go ahead and, let me turn the, cap, the espresso back on. So you're supposed to press this button so water starts coming through and then and then press stop. As soon as the water starts coming through, press stop. But I already did some um, frothing, so I think the water's already ready to go. Um, but the first time you put in some new water, Go ahead and press this button, let it, without the grinds, let it come through. Once it starts running, press stop. And then throw out that water and then go ahead and continue putting in your grinds and all that. 
or your grounds. Okay, I'm gonna press start. This is so weird because cappuccino is supposed to have a little espresso. When you make it, it's supposed to have a little foam on the very top. <laughs> and so how do I know when to stop this? That's so weird. But I guess in a way too, you can control how hot or how heavy like that you want the cappuccino to be. But basically I'm at the eyeball and that's when I'm saying maybe you should get the little glass shots because that one will show you the measurement and you'll say, oh, okay, you know what? That's too much or that's too little. Um, I do want to show you that it is doing the little foam, which is great. That little foam is a sign of a good espresso maker. One side is more than the other, the other side is more. They're kind of like trading off on who gets more of what. I'm going to stop it now because one is filling up way more than the other side, which is kind of weird. Okay. So this side, look at, is a champ, and this side has less. So that's just another sign to me that that's not very good. What is... This is such a weird machine. I shouldn't be talking about this much because we have to get going on this. I guess what we could do is put this one to the side, put this one right in the middle, and get a little more going in there. All right, to get our full. So weird. All right. And then I stop it and it's still gonna be doing a little foaming, right? You are supposed to use this right away, just so you know. Once you make your espresso, you're supposed to have your stuff ready, just use it up, right? But, oh well. So, I'm gonna put some milk in this, and I only have 2% milk, because that's what I use, but, um, use your soy milk, whatever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna put quite a bit, because I need enough to make a cappuccino, and I need enough to make a latte. Now, um, I don't know if you can see, I left like an inch off the top. Just leave yourself some space for foam. Um, supposedly this is gonna make the foam for me. I'm not used to that. I'm used to frothing the milk for myself, but we will see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna try to get you guys a little bit closer to this area. Again, it's hard to see, but, because I wanna keep it out this way. This is weird. Usually, you know, I guess you can put it away, but I would like for it to be a little further out here, but I'm gonna press it down so it's at cappuccino. It says froth milk, I'm um, hot milk is up, cappuccino down, and you're just gonna bring this over Always keep it submerged, okay? So this is well inside my little cup. I'm gonna turn it on. And I have a feeling it's gonna froth for me, but I always keep going in a circular motion because you're trying to heat up your milk as much as you can. This thing is in a weird spot. There's a lot of reasons I don't really care for this little machine. <laughs> anyway, I always keep it moving. It's already making froth, so I guess it's frothing on its own, but normally what you do is you keep it moving, you pull down until the stick is almost out, but not out because it'll splatter everywhere. And you hear that? You see that? That's how you froth. And so the very skim of like the very top of the milk and it's making more froth. But supposedly I guess this thing does its own thing, so. Again, it died on me. That is crazy. It didn't even heat up the milk. It's not even hot yet. So I guess we'll have to do it again. Maybe it only does a little bit of spurts at a time. This is really a bummer, you guys. I was looking forward to this thing, but... Give me some more. There we go, there we go. So weird. Maybe that's all it puts out, is enough for one drink at a time. I need this to froth more. And the froth isn't even that great. I'm gonna make my own froth up here on the top. So all you do is you skim the top of your milk and it should start frothing for you. Again, this is for two cups, so it's getting kind of crazy. But I make my own froth again. Pull it down and get it going. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. Hopefully that's enough froth. If not, I'll come back and do a little more and I hate that it's dripping on my counter. <laughs> okay. All right, machine. I don't know about this. All right. So let's say we're making a cappuccino. You're gonna take a shot of espresso. You are going to, usually I have, let me get a knife or something. You want to hold back your foam. So basically a cappuccino is, where are we at? Is a third, a third, and a third. So a third of espresso. Start pouring your milk, about a third. So about the same amount, two ounces of milk. And then the rest should be foam. This thing is very weak on foam. <laughs> 
What a bummer. Okay, you know what, while we're here, let me just go ahead and make a latte because I already have enough milk left for a latte. So let's go ahead and take our cup. For the latte, you're gonna do your shot and basically fill it up with froth, with steam milk because you pretty much steamed it. And then at the very top, you let whatever froth you have left come out. And I didn't have much, but that's a latte. And with the cappuccino, I would go back and add a little bit more milk and froth a little bit more milk so I can get more froth on the top. But it should be, like I said, two ounces of your, your espresso, two ounces of milk, and then top the rest off with a nice thick cap of foam, right? Again, you can just froth it up so you get more froth. This one, your latte is your two ounces, your shot, and then just fill it up with milk however big you like and a little foam on top. Now, if you wanna get fancy and make your little hearts and stuff, go ahead, I don't know how to do that, so that's not my thing. Again, if you also wanted to flavor your um, latte, you could put the shot in of espresso, then add in your flavoring, just so that it's down at the bottom, and, um, and then top it off with your milk, that way it kind of melds together, and you can still give it a mix. Usually I don't mix it with a spoon, I just let, you know, having poured in the milk kind of does its thing, but I have some Tarani syrup here that I thought it was really cute because I like the way they had a dispenser bottle. <laughs> I got this at my local grocery store. And so for a latte, now we are doing a caramel latte. Just throw a nice little glug of that in there. Yeah, I can still give it a little mix. That's probably what I'm going to drink this morning. I don't know about the cappuccino. Let's try that out. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's only warm. It's not hot because of <laughs> the way this thing um, frothed. And I just noticed that this says sugar-free. Ew! I do not like stuff that's sugar-free, but maybe my son will drink it up. So guys, I'm not sure what I think of this machine. I give it six out of 10 stars. <laughs> like, this is so weird to me that you have to watch it and then that you have to do your frothing and the thing quit on me. And um, I guess I just have to get used to it, if anything. But, um, you know, for $300, and that's not cheap for a lot of people. I mean, for some people, for an espresso maker, that is cheap, right? Because usually they're super expensive but we will see so thanks for watching if you have any questions i'll try to answer them now that you're done i would turn off the machine and then um take this guy out and as you can see you have your grounds that got steamed up and this little latch all that is there for is to hold it down like this you push your thumb against it and you hit it against like your um, trash can just to knock this out. And sometimes if you're lucky, maybe I'll hit it right here. I, you know, I'll have to, I have a lot of cleanup to do, guys. Um, sometimes if you're lucky, it comes out in one chunk. But yeah, there you go. See, it came out in a little hunk. You just throw it away, right? Or you put it in your garden, put it in your compost. That's great stuff for compost. Um, and then this guy, all you're gonna do is take your little basket out and wash it out because you still have some grounds in there. And you can also take a towel or something and clean up this area where you latch it in. There's another little filter there. So it gets filtered a few times, like that filter keeps the, the grounds down. Um, you can wipe it. I usually hardly ever do that because it's not the biggest deal, but you can come in here with a wet, damp cloth and just wipe that up. And always, always, always clean this as soon as you're done using it because I'm telling you right now, milk will cake up on this after the second or third time and it's like impossible to remove. You have to soak it, like keep a cup there, keep it nice and soaked until you can remove it again. So if you clean it up every time you use it, you'll have less of that kind of um, mess that you have to t deal with. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that gave you a little idea of how this thing works. Let me try this cappuccino now that I'm thinking about it. Nice and dark. Yeah, I don't like that sugar-free taste is never something I'm, I'm into. But anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.